esports. Uh, just uh, let this title, like you know, stepping to the esport area. So let me just. Oh, you joined me. Good. So the interesting thing is, uh, how did I, you know, kind of, you know, get involved with esports? Up until you know, a couple of months ago, I was uh, running an advertising technology company and really, you know, into ad tech and online media, and I had no clue about esports. And then a friend of mine. Who was invested in the, in the company said, uh, you know, we have a big problem because they are, they are all they are just a nice company, but they have no clue how to, you know, professionalize that towards advertisers, towards agencies, you know, towards the public. So um, uh, I dig a little bit into it, and uh, so um, I want to start with um, uh, something just to just to ask you, um, if you would like to, um, if you had a chance to have dinner with somebody tonight, who would you choose? Where? Here. Any any person? In England? No, in the world. In the world. Like could be the Pope, could be whatever, like a whatever star. <laughs> That's a good question. It's gonna be your last dinner. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. no. So you know, there will be more dinners uh, after that. <laughs> Maybe Branson? Richard Branson? Mr. Branson, okay. Elon Musk. Elon Musk, good one, yeah. Don't you don't know? Okay, well, you don't have to decide. Okay, so um, if you ask um, millennials, millennials are people between 16 and uh, 25, um, who are their superstars? Uh, and uh, there was a study actually, you know, um, being conducted. Um, and uh, who were the millennials' favorite celebrities? And uh, I only knew two of the top ten, because uh, actually eight of them were online stars, like YouTubers, which names I've never heard before in my life. So that kind of shows that there's a market actually going on right now, totally besides our you know normal, let's say, daily life. So we know Taylor Swift and Bruno Mars probably because they're a singer, <laughs> um, but uh, I mean there's no no Tom Cruise, no whatsoever, no Richard Branson, no Elon Musk. So that's actually the the world the millennials live in. I think that's very important to understand the whole dynamics of, of esports, what's going on. So um, um, if you just look at the development of um, of, of gaming it, itself and as such. I mean, in the 80s, uh, Atari was uh, founded, and then we have you know certain development towards online, and uh, um, and actually 2006, the first let's say esports kind of event uh, started with, with Intel, and then um, 2014 there was a big acquisition, Twitch. You probably have heard that that was bought by Amazon for almost one billion dollar, and actually all they do is just broadcast other people you know uh, gaming. Mm -hmm. So um, that's really a big. Um, a big thing, and uh, ESPN, you know, in last year um, launched a vertical esports, and uh, the E League by, by Turner was founded, and uh, so a lot of you know activities um, going on, and uh, Facebook and also Twitter is in uh, actually active now in broadcasting events, so that's uh, really an interesting and uh, kind of you know growing growing development in the in the last year. So what is esports? Um, just to kind of you know put it together and to have a certain um, idea, um, a simple definition is uh, you know competitive video gameplay between internet connected players. So um, and um, the fandom which you know kind of you know goes around it. So actually there are two dimensions. One is um, you play you play online. Uh, on the other one is uh, you have a, a certain event and a venue and that being broadcasted. And people are actually visiting that venue and watching watching the, the games uh, the gamers uh, play. So and uh, success as a gamer and that's always you know the thing is um, is that really a sport? So I mean that's uh, you know philosophical discussion of course um, um, if it's really a sport. But if you see those guys actually playing how fast they are with their with their hands and what they're doing, it's just it's just amazing. So I, I have a ten-year-old son, and actually that's the same thing. I see that. I mean, if I play FIFA with him, like World Cup, I have no chance at all because he's so fast with his hands, and it's just incredible. So um, there's uh, there's obviously something something uh, into it, and um, so uh, that's uh, one one thing to, to keep in mind. And uh, those uh, are those uh, players. I mean, you have to pick, you know, cups and all that. And uh, just want to show you a video just to see how that looks like. 
Yeah. What is it here? In the States? Uh, no, that's actually in, uh, in Poland. Pakowice. So this is uh, just to give you an idea how, how that how that works now the whole dynamic in the in the field in the, in the stadium is. So this is not even close comparable to football to, to NBA to whatever I've seen. I mean, um, I've uh, I've been in Poland in the um, beginning of March and this is just you know crazy how everything you know goes goes together and they just go go realistic. Um, just to get an idea for for you and also to um, maybe to kind of you know put it in perspective to other sports. Um, there are, um, if you see the popularity of esports uh, by age, of course it's, uh, it's something which is you know very very active in the in the years um, you know between uh, 16, 20 to, to 30. So you see comparable to other uh, sports like American football or basketball, of course they are very um, uh, they are in the uh, let's say in the higher uh, range. Um, that's of course you know decreasing. Um, it's still of course absolutely not as you know kind of you know popular as basketball, American football, but uh, at least you see a lot of you know tendencies that that's really a growing a growing sport. This is just in the states, huh? right? Yeah, this is uh, this is actually in the states. states. This is made in the states. Yeah. yeah. So basically, I think that the you know the center is uh, still still the states, so still um, uh, U.S., but it's now actually you now growing also in, in Europe and other countries as well. So um, if you just uh, you know compare the numbers, I mean it's, it's numbers and statistics, but uh, um, it's almost um, you know um, expected to hit you know the NFL uh, actually uh, revenues and also um, uh, enthusiasts than uh, you know comparable to NFL. I mean NFL has a big problem because American football is getting older and older, so actually you know it's actually 50 plus. And if you see the Super Bowl, for instance, you see already decreasing interest in the, in the viewers. So that's something which is, uh, of course, with equals a little bit different. So um, if you just put it put it together, so gaming itself um, is what every you know kind of you know traditional sport league wants desperately to become young, global, digital, and uh, increasingly diverse. So of course, that's uh, from 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 my perspective as a, as an ad advertising guy, that's something which of course is very attractive to a lot of brands, um, to to the media, and also to publishers. So um, and that's uh, what what ESPN said. They also you know invested heavily in that in that and say well for the first time in, in generations we are witnessing actually a birth of a new sport. So um, that's actually the, the level we are we are kind of you know comparing comparing the whole the whole thing in the meanwhile. So um, just just two things. I just put those uh, things together, and after that we can uh, discuss. Um, the, the audience is there. I mean that's uh, that's clear. I mean uh, the numbers are always uh, you know. Can always discuss, but uh, um, it's a, it's a huge market, um, and uh, I mean the average average gamer you know does not fit in the stereotype anymore. That's a nerdy guy you know sitting in a cellar and uh, has no you know social contacts uh, because that's that's totally over those days. Um, if you just see money wise, I just put it in to get get you an idea. Um, you know how the media rights and the global expansion from you know football, NBA, and all those stuff is actually increasing. So um, you see that uh, that actually content-wise, um, TV. I mean, uh, having all discussions between you know um, uh, linear TV and you know all those kinds of things. We as uh, Netflix and uh, so the most valuable advertising uh, inventory and also the most you know viewed live TV shows um, have mainly been sports because that's something which you want to see live. You want to see how it ends. And actually, there's only a limited, let's say, interest in reruns. Um, the, the funny thing is that actually, even in esports, they do a lot of, you know, the revenues in reruns because they actually uh, kind of all still still make money. So obviously, those um, those kind of people like to see um, runs actually even after the game was played, just to see the moves and to really understand and to uh, to to educate themselves. 
yeah, I mean the pressure of uh, on TV viewership, um, I think is um, uh, is also clear. Let's, let's skip that, and you see that you know more and more traditional sports um, stakeholders are uh, investing and uh, putting putting effort into it, uh, like NBA um, clubs and also Formula E and also football clubs in, in Europe are coming uh, to invest and build their own um, esports team. Um, so that's one uh, interesting thing. Um, Schalke 04 was a, um, is a football club in, in Germany, and um, they've been, you know, fighting for for years, you know, internally with the board to actually you know, establish a team. So they um, they actually just released a press release that they uh, now finally, you know, investing in that and uh, building up a team. And uh, this press release had more hits globally than any press release in the last three years combined in Schalke. So that shows actually, and the mainly was was in Asia and Australia. So actually, uh, for the, you know, for the management of Schalke, that shows them you know immediately how how big that market is. You know, so that's a really um, interesting um, uh, dynamic in, in that in that field. So if you see the numbers, um, I mean, esports have um, become a global um, spectator um, sport with uh, 290 million uh, viewers, and uh, it's in the meanwhile it's, uh, it's a it's a business which currently consists of seven to eight hundred million dollars globally, and uh, I mean the big uh, thing which makes it attractive to advertisers is, uh, of course, you know, reaching the, the millennials. A lot of brands are getting involved. Um, big players uh, enter the arena of, of esports um, with, you know, football clubs and, uh, and brands like like uh, Red Bull, uh, Coca Cola, Intel. You know, have been active for for years. Celebrities, uh, you know, especially in the States, Shaquille O'Neal or Ice T or you know others, uh, they they invest uh, Michael Jordan in, in esports teams, and uh, that's something which is uh, now see increasingly um, rising. It's Magic Johnson. Uh, yes, Magic yes, Magic Johnson. Yeah, it's Magic Johnson. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Um, so um, yeah, you see actually that you know also the uh, from from investor perspective, esports getting um, more and more um, um, interesting and attractive. Uh, you see crazy multiples, you know, on, on revenues and, and, and those uh, kind of uh, stuff. Um, and there was a big uh, acquisition from uh, from NTG, it's a publisher in Sweden. Um, they bought uh, ESL. And um, so that's, uh, that's something which is uh, going on um, here right now. Just maybe another video to show the... That's actually uh, Katowice in Poland. You see that again, how, that, how the whole thing you know, works in dynamics. Mm -hmm. One year, right? Or is it something that... Um, that's uh, periodically, so I'll show you later the timetable. So okay. that's, that's uh, one. That's the final of a, of a series. Of a series okay. What game is it? Uh, that's uh, League of Legends and uh, also uh, Counter Strike. Uh, warfare. Yes, yeah. Mainly it's uh, uh, Counter Strike, and it's all something which I want to discuss later when I show you some some numbers. Okay. You know how you actually see the implications, and also you know ethically and you know from the development and, um, and such. But I think it's good to have at least an, uh, an overview. Um, so the state of the of the play right now, it's still. It's still very fragmented because it's not really, you know, regulated uh, in a way that uh, uh, there's a there's an organization like the FIFA, for instance, which allows only every four years a World Cup. So if an advertiser approaches a company and say, "Well, I want to establish a league," then they just do it. You know, it's just uh, everything is, you know, possible to to buy to buy into. 
And um, of course, it's uh, still not clear who holds power in the whole thing. Is it actually the, the, the manufacturers of the game, uh, like, like Riot or you know, Blizzard, or is it uh, the, the ones who are actually distributing it to have the rights, like Twitch? Or is it actually the company who's, uh, who's owning maybe teams, or is it the teams, or is it uh, like the, the ones who actually do the events? So there's a lot of you know interesting dynamics going on, also in terms of um, uh, competitions and the media rights and sponsorships and all that stuff. So that's really really interesting um, uh, to see how that whole thing kind of you know puts uh, puts puts together right now. And um, yeah, I've seen a lot of you know um, uh, esports teams and events, uh, you know, kind of you know trying to adopt structures and uh, practices uh, right now. So if you just see um, here, let's say the, the ecosystem a little bit, uh, you see on one hand the game publishers um, um, like like Riot or Blizzard or Microsoft, um, and then on the other hand you see the the brands and advertiser, of course, want to get into that, and on the other hand have have the fans, and then uh, you know the the, the Broadcasters and distributors, and then you have the teams, and then you know a company. In that case, it's uh, it's ESL, or it could be another company as well, who's actually you know kind of developing uh, series, leagues, and events. And that's um, of course interesting um, to see. If you see that, for instance, a company like like Blizzard or Riot, I mean, a couple of years ago, um, uh, they just you know made their money out of uh, just you know selling video games on, on DVD and CDs. But now actually the whole thing totally changed because if you actually um, as, a, as a company, if it's say Gillette or Red Bull wants to do like a um, like a competition on a, on a game which is actually from them like League of Legends or, or Counter Strike, of course they have to pay you know royalties uh, to that uh, to that company, and um, and um, they're actually really you know growing right now. It's really really amazing you know what they did, and also the distributors here. I mean if you compare. Um, let's say the, the media rights, um, which is being paid for, you know, Champions League, for instance, in football, which is uh, super crazy. And if you see, you know, the, the viewers actually in esports, and especially in that, you know, advertising interested, you know, uh, target group, it's just amazing how low that is, you know, in esports right now. Of course, that's the everybody tries to, you know, move that a little bit up. And um, so that's a lot of, you know, dynamics going on. A lot of, you know, packages could be, uh, could be, um, you know, put together. So from a marketing and sales perspective, there's a lot of things uh, to do. And uh, it's actually also a global uh, thing. So that's just an example ESL because uh, I know that a little bit. So you see that it's actually a global, global coverage. So um, actually next weekend uh, there's a um, final for for the Pro League in, in Dallas, in Texas. Um, and uh, you see a lot of uh, different uh, different series, and maybe that um, shows a little bit the different levels. So you have amateurs and you have professionals. So you have the open league, um, which is uh, yeah everybody can kind of you know play. So good luck, have fun. And then actually you have you know different um, uh, layers of, of skill, and um, and then at the end you have the pro league, and um, uh, that's basically uh, you know League of Legends and, uh, and Counter Strike. And if you see that. Uh, in terms of you know series, how, how you know how that goes. So we see a lot of um, let's say the ESL national championship uh, you have uh, three times uh, per year, and you have the pro league that's in, in Dallas right now, which next weekend, um, and then uh, five in Denze in Denmark, and you have you know other uh, areas. And in the meantime, in between, they play almost every week against each other, and that's you know only broadcasted online. So you're also producing hours. It's only the same game. It's uh, in the same game. Yes. The riot. Uh, what, which what League, League of Legends. League of Legends. Yeah, and the Counter Strike, League of Legends, and Counter Strike are the two biggest. And you have uh, Dota, which is another uh, okay. multiplayer game. And uh, so the basic idea is that two teams, normally five people, they play play, play each other. other. And um, they actually, you know, sitting in a stadium on a, on a large table, and uh -huh. uh, they actually are warming up like uh, actually normal sports. And then it's uh, you know broadcasted by on a big screen. And you have somebody actually uh, commenting it, so okay. that somebody's really you know explaining. So you always see one one guy actually playing. I mean, they're all you know in parallel. So um, uh, so League of Legends, it's uh, actually a pretty complicated game. To be honest, I uh, also didn't understand it fully <laughs> up until that point because you can buy you know stuff and you have you know certain powers and uh, it's, it's, it's really complicated. Um, and um, 
but uh, like like basic games like like Counter Strike, um, which is also a discussion I'm gonna you know like to have with you how you think about that. I mean, it's basically you just you know shoot everybody you see, yeah, and uh, yeah. so um, then uh, it's, it's something which of course with different weapons and different uh, things. So um, so there are certain say implications, but it, but uh, I just wanted to show you with the first you know slides that yeah, that's it's actually a leak, so it's getting more more professional. Um, but in a way, it's still in, in a phase where we can kind of adapt and uh, and um, uh, be flexible. And uh, um, to be honest, I think that's just a matter of you know how, how the whole thing you know develops uh, further. Um, is that something which uh, you know is, is is the future? Is that something where we actually need also you know in, in a higher sense as a society now we need to kind of you know fight that or do we think that's 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 good or do we think that's not good um, uh, can we prevent it should we prevent it and those kind of things are also um, uh, I think important I and mean, then just you know skip that with the euro base and uh, who's involved uh, for instance in Spain Telefonica just you know signed a big deal with uh, Movistar and here in, uh, in Spain um, and uh, other uh, other brands as well. So actually, you know, esports is starting to professionalize, and um, yeah, it's becoming of one of the leading global global sports. Um, one of the interesting uh, thing is, uh, I actually talked uh, two weeks ago with uh, with a guy in the U.S. Um, uh, who's representing the army, because the army in the U.S. has a big big problem because uh, they they just get the wrong people to apply for the army because not really you know attractive to go there. Um, so a lot of you know those people failed the first test, so it's almost 70 percent. Um, so they also think about actually getting involved in esports as, as a sponsor and actually developing a game where they actually think would people prepare to actually go to the army. So if you think about that, so you're actually promoting something. We had also scary. they can take the gun. Exactly, exactly, they exactly. So what what they actually what you're actually thinking about is actually building a. A game where they have certain, let's say, I mean, just picture that. I mean, you have certain situations. Let's say you put even, you know, maybe certain countries uh, where where actually the U.S. is active, and you put that and as a as a kind of a training ground and and to you know bring people actually you know playing towards towards the whole thing. So. Um, that's, that's something which, of course, um, is really a little bit, uh, you know, maybe maybe scary, but also, um, I mean, interesting, interesting uh, to see. But it's already the case, no? Maybe uh, I mean, not that the, I would say on um, the hiring process to get in the army, but once you are inside, for example, the how, how do you call that, the fighters, the plane fighters, they are already using simulators, no? to, to be able exactly, to, uh, exactly, Top yes. Gun and all these films. Uh, and um, yeah, I mean that's, uh, that's something which of course is very very interesting, um, you know, uh, for them, and maybe even let's say you know build their own league, you know, for them. Yeah. And um, so that's uh, the kind of th dynamics which are which are going on right now. And um, so um, it's uh, actually it's it's comparable. I mean, it's not of course as big, but I also went to a conference last week about a guy who was uh, actually with the drone masters. They're doing drone races. So it's also not regulated at all. So it's just you know a lot of you know things are, are going on. You see people. There was this um, uh, guy was a European uh, champion. I think he's 20 years old, and uh, I mean it's just normal guy, you know. So it's it's the interesting you know to see how that how that uh, you know uh, develops further. And um, yeah, I mean it's a uh, it's it's a huge outcome in terms of that's you know of course it's like a sales and marketing kind of you know um, um, statement. Um, in terms of you know brand recognition all that stuff, there are thousands of studies which show that actually you know one euro invested in those kind of you know um, uh, areas is much uh, much better much better return than, than the other uh, traditional advertising. So um, yeah, there's just some examples: Mountain Dew, Telefonica, Intel, and um, yeah. What I also want to um, kind of you know as a second part of this uh, um, small small discussion is. Uh, what do you think about it? Um, because to be honest, it's something which where I, you know, kind of, you know, fall into a little bit, and uh, I'm still, you know, having also my, my moments. Whether this is something which is which is good to support, or is it maybe something which we need to kind of, you know, be careful to uh, to let that, you know, develop further. So um, I'm happy to kind of, you know, get your input on that. Um, and uh, of course, I mean, how does that, you know, develop? develop further and uh, if you just uh, is, is it is it really a sport is it something uh, where 
um, you want your son to uh, be, be involved, uh, yes or no? Um, and of course, you know, ethical issues, I mean, is there sports actually, you know, kind of, you know, killing people? Is that something where we want our, you know, kids being, being raised with, you know? So that's, uh, um, yeah, just uh, interested also in your, in your thoughts and to so give a little discussion maybe rolling. I, I think one, in one part, you could be, could like it or not like it, but it's like if I have a customer eh, and I want to change my customer, I cannot change my customer. Mm -hmm. Is it what it is? I, I, I can decide if for me it's moral or not moral, being inside, but I think that's, that's a fact. Yeah. The, the people that it's moving and the money that it's moving and the mon money that will move. Yeah. Because it's growing and growing and I'm sure yeah. that you know, we'll start with uh, VR and all the things that will involve maybe mm -hmm. will be inside. You can choose which one of the participants you are, you are taking a look yeah. and you will see the same that he's sewing and, and you can be more and more and more active in that part and I think that it's going it's going to grow like hell. Yeah. And but it's more of course I I, if I, I was thinking that were like several uh, games inside, not mm -hmm. just that one. I was thinking that were more like I'm not sure like TikTok FIFA or yeah, it's, it's also it's also just you know it's, it's but that one as, as I saw it's the more no, that's yeah. that's actually the focus on uh, what I have to focus on on this, you know, where I have the footage, you know. So there are also you know other games as well. Of course, there are other you know companies, and uh, so it's of course you have you know also you know let's say less brutal games, of course, like like FIFA and all that stuff. So it's uh, yeah, but I left when I was studying. All my uh, uh, flatmates they were playing uh, World of Warcraft. Yes, yes. It's the more scenario that I know. I never played, but uh, they were all the nights playing. You yeah, we have this, this, uh, yeah, we have to certain groups and, and stuff, and yeah. we have still have, uh, I mean, um, I still have you know people you know my um, among my friends who actually you know pretty pretty old, but still they, they meet in certain cafes and uh, and play. Well, you From play to Quake, no? Yes, yes, yes. yes. And then it's uh, I mean it's, it's just something where. Um, if you think about that, you know, put it a little bit, you know, uh, higher from from the from the discussion. So I mean, I maybe rather have people, you know, living in that world and try to avoid to you know do something bad in the real world. I mean, it's uh, the discussion we just had also mm -hmm. this morning. Um, on the other hand, of course, there's um, uh, with, with, there was one discussion which is actually I think a pretty German discussion. Um, there was one. Um, uh, one one incident actually where, where a guy you know killed I think uh, in Munich it was like uh, one one year ago one and a half years ago I think seven or eight people with um, the truck uh, not with the truck but with with a gun actually mm -hmm. um, that uh, yeah and the McDonald's no? yeah 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 McDonald's and then uh, and then for Siemens the TV station in Germany uh, on the next day they stopped all esports uh, you know broadcast activities because of that. You know, and then of course the discussion went on in the public. So is that something which supports that? So do we uh -huh. are we actually educating people to try that in real life, or is that something which is totally independent from that? Um, and um, and then of course it's a I think it's a it's a discussion which is um, yeah you can of course you know argue both ways, um, but um, I mean there's no on the other hand there's no empiric let's say results or study which shows a direct relation between you know playing computer games and being aggressive in the real world um, and um, on, on the other hand it's of course it's a fact you know so you actually I mean you, you play that and uh, actually in Germany it's a it's impression called killer games um, that I think is impression it's only used in the, in the locally uh, <laughs> so if it, it's interesting if you talk to advertisers and agencies in Germany that's that's a big big thing and a big issue but if you go let's say abroad to you know even in Europe in Spain or France or, or UK or States I mean nobody really cares because it's it's normal life so mm -hmm. um, so if I you know see myself um, actually as a, as a father with a ten year old playing games I mean there are lots of brutal games um, and uh, I try to kind of you know, control that, but on the other hand, I'm always tempted not to control it because I think it's also something which should be a process, you know, by the individual itself to kind of you know sort it out. But of course, there are you know different uh, different aspects of that. I don't know. I mean, regarding, I have two kids, um, mm -hmm. eight and ten years old. So do you control what they play, and do you? I, I do. I do. But I mean. Let me let me see how I can explain it. I mean, there's one thing that you can control it at home, but 
those kids you cannot isolate them from the school and when you see the school exactly it's exactly. all their friends they are playing not yet on those games but they are games like i don't know like clash of clans and all these uh, casual games that they can minecraft play. for instance minecraft, super stuff easy like that. Play, yeah. so you cannot block them because otherwise you are in my view at least uh, and i think different views are obviously legitimate but in my view you, they are living in a society that today most of the kids or 90 percent they, they are playing so yeah. the discussions in the school are regarding this and that and the other and they look a lot of for example youtube uh, videos regarding oh look this guy is yeah. how he's beating the other one and the clash of clans etc so to me as a father i would say the role is to just put that i would say in what you think is the, you know the, the importance of that versus mm -hmm. the importance of other stuff. I make it, for example, they, I do not allow them to play until after we have uh, dinner. Yeah. So basically, they they play in other stuff. Uh, no TV until after we have dinner all together, and after I let them make the iPad or whatever they want. Yeah. But yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's, so it's, it's for me, it's the same discussion, for example, we have regarding uh, buying them a mobile phone. Mm -hmm. That's exactly the same thing. <laughs> Yeah. You should or you should not. Yeah, same but thing. Yeah. 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 You are in a class, there are 25 uh, people and you are currently the only one without mobile phone. Uh, That's actually it's, 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 it's <laughs> you know? a strategy because it's also what I know being told. Yeah. I'm the only one who has no iPad, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, that's uh, the only one with no phone, you know. So it's it's super special. Super special, yeah. So if something happens to me, I cannot call you, blah, blah, blah. And so, well, I mean, you, you Have you seen the film uh, recently, what was uh, <laughs> from Viggo Mortensen, that, uh, that guy that lives in the in the jungle, in the stage, without TV, without anything? No. no you have, uh, what's it called? What's it called? Uh, Captain. Captain, yeah. let me see. Captain America. Captain America. Yeah. No, it's, it's no, 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 that's Captain, that's a hero. Hero. Captain something. It's a kid's hero. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you. Yeah. And it's exactly the same thing, basically. Yeah. The Captain Fantastic. Okay. Exactly the same thing. They raise a family only in the yeah. like in a forest. Yeah. No TV, no radio, no anything. Yeah. And the guys work like, you know, amazing guys, very strong, very sportive because every morning, you know, they, go up, down, and uh, they read books and everything they know, I would say, knowledge higher than the average yes. uh, other guys in the school. But what happens when they merge, they know anything. They know anything all plot, they know anything all that. Yeah, that's true. It's a big shock. I mean, it's, it's exactly the, the argument, I think, uh, which is, uh, of course, we can uh, uh, solve here today, that, I mean, how do you, you know, do you want to control it and see it, what they play? I mean, they're, they're playing anyway, you know, in school when they meet friends. Um, but, um, yeah, so I think that's a lot of, you know, implications actually, you know, um, going on the whole, in the whole, in the whole area. And uh, if you just, you know, I mean, as you just said, I mean, you cannot stop it. I mean, it's a development which is there. So at least you want to, you know, see what's, what's, what's going on. And, um, yeah, so it might be, um, uh, just it's just it's just there and uh, it's it's a new it's a new uh, area in the sport and it's it's digital and if you just you know think further like virtual reality and all that stuff I mean um, a lot of um, uh, things actually also um, you know interesting there and um, just see where that whole thing you know goes but it's a really interesting and uh, you know growing mm -hmm. market. I, th I mean, I agree that it's a trend that it's going up, but also I, I would say that uh, traditional games are not yet over completely lost. I mean, I think, I mean, they get tired as well from TVs and playing yeah. on iPads and stuff like that. And they like as well playing cards or playing chess or stuff like that. Uh, I don't know. I, I think we, I agree with you, we can block them because the society is there. So what? I think we need to teach them is to understand that it's not only that and this is a game, it's very good, but I think they have something on top side. Yeah. In the other hand, yeah. I, I was discussing that I think last week with someone. Uh, all the part they are doing, they are, they are taking uh, kids really, really young to start playing. And then they took, for example, in Berlin, they have some of the training areas. 
and then they put there, and they give a salary, and they give them a flat, they give them everything. The only implication yeah. they have, they need to play at least a minimum amount of hours a day. But then each year they renew a little part of the team. Yeah. The guys that they are not as good as they should, yeah. they are just quitting and hiring new guys. Yeah. And then imagine that guys, uh, when you have been for two years removed from school, maybe 16 years old, You've been there uh, having where you won uh, with a huge salary. With, uh, imagine that you came back to your father's or your parents' house. Yeah. It's going to be something really difficult to see. I mean, it's the same thing, of course, other sports like football when you have, you know, when you actually, you know, you're 17 and 18, you don't make Yeah, but I, I, I've, been, I've been inside yeah. one of those, and yeah. at least in, in my case, my parents and from the part of the team, they were really. Uh, Focus on studies. Yeah. I was in Handel yeah. in yeah. Barcelona, yeah. and they were really straight. Yeah, that's true. That's you, true. you need to accomplish a minimum uh, scholarship, yeah. mm -hmm. or you were out. Of the team. Yeah, yeah. And I don't think that the type of things yeah. are going to happen. Yeah. They, they, have, they have a different reality of the real world. And also interesting, I mean, you see, you know, kind of, you know, pro players in 17, 18, I mean, they make like 10, 10k per month or something, which is a lot of money for those people. Um, and uh, they just, you know, and it's also, of course, something which, you know, develops further. But if, if there's a market, I mean, now the, um, uh, you know, the, the price, um, the price money goes really up into two, three, you know, five million in certain, uh, you know, certain tournaments. It's like tennis or golf, you know, so that's, that's, that's professional sports and um, that's uh, really yeah interesting interesting to see and uh, it was just you know striking for me that uh, that was actually going on I actually didn't know <laughs> because it's uh, it's just a total different you know area of, of society of you know of, if you don't have a son in that, that age you just don't see it you know yeah. in daily life of course now I'm a little bit you know more um, let's say open to that but uh, it's, it's just something which we always Tends that everything is kind of in a, in a certain way how it, it should be, but that actually in new sports was kind of you know created and uh, which is um, yeah becoming a big market. Maybe one one question more on the on the yeah. tech side in terms of ad tech. Yeah. I mean there are new new models that are being unveiled in, in those guys those kind of esports like for example uh, putting advertising or something within the game. Yeah. It's a, because it, I mean you. It's more complicated to do that. I mean, we have these folks like yeah. uh, how, how it's going on in that direction. Well, actually, advertising in a game that was uh, actually a trend a couple years ago, and yeah. uh, in-game advertising. But you, there are a lot of you know studies which show that actually the um, uh, the players are not really you know focusing on that, so you actually try to avoid it. Yeah. Uh, so there's some you know different uh, ways to actually just you know um, like a certain interstitials or just have like a certain you know or you mm -hmm. just have to sponsoring. Or you put in you know, a name within within the game. So in those so games, you don't have any advertising in, in not in the game. Originally, not because that the, the publishers itself they really don't want that. Um, okay. But uh, I mean, if you build a package, for instance, what you have is um, let's say you know two players talking before a broadcast, uh, like like in football, they just you know discuss things, and then it's uh, whatever the Gillette uh, move sure. of the day or something and then uh, so we have Selena premium model exactly there are certain not certain models. Games like Clash of Clans that they have all advertising all yes all. yes yes but also I mean of course there are uh, there are teams and the teams are supported by by certain advertisers and uh, uh, what's also a big thing is, uh, is uh, influencer uh, marketing so they actually do YouTube clips and uh, uh, drinking uh, water from a certain brand, and that you know, it's like immediately a hundred thousand of you know viewers. Mm -hmm. So you see a lot of you know things, things uh, which are which is going on, um, especially in uh, so-called endemic brands, meaning like telco or you know hardware and all that stuff, which is related to to gaming. But also now it's also non-endemic, um, like uh, you know water, FMCG, and uh, automotive and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's actually the next. I, the last time I played a game was Game Boy, so I don't really know. <laughs> but as my experience with uh, work with uh, teenagers in exclusion risk, and I studied a little bit about, uh, and there's a higher 10% of addiction on teenagers that are becoming very yeah. players. Of, um, 
called games in one side. On the other side, it's also an evasion, an evasion, an evasion of the reality that they escape, are, no? escape. They are what they want to be, and also it becomes for them a really, really important world when they are something that they want to be in the real world. They can. So this is kind of dangerous, and I think we should really, even if it's a fact, of course, but really take care of what is in the content of these uh, games, because this is kind of a big issue. Yes, no, no definitely. Yeah. Because it's, of course, it's happened and it's in going in this way, and also advertisement have a big, big, big uh, paper here, because, mm. of course, they will, it's growing up, and they're really, really, vulnerable ages yeah. and you cannot really control it. Some cases that they sleep, they don't sleep in all night, they are tired in school and mm. anybody knows why and it's just they're under the blankets playing all the time. Yeah. So let me and also read an article that the kids of a uh, Silicon Valley more executive I have no phone still fifteen years old. Mm. Yeah. And they have no computers, no, no yeah, iPads. You see, you see a lot of the stories that are saying, you know, like Bill that Gates, for instance, you know, educated his own kids actually not to be, you know, online and playing all the time. So that's uh, that's yeah. yeah. So that's uh, that's it's really, yeah, yeah, that's a really interesting and interesting point. So I mean, I think everybody needs to kind of you know find find the way. I mean, that's you know part of the you know parental you know care and the parental education. Yeah. Of course, you know you cannot really super avoid it. On the other hand. Um, well, my experience personally that um, I actually um, um, there's a rule that, that she should not play my son after 7:30 or 8 uh, because then if he if he's playing that you know under the blanket as I just said I mean then he's processing all that and he cannot sleep and then those kind of things um, of course it's sometimes hard to execute and uh, sometimes it works sometimes not not so good of course but um, at least if you have certain let's say a framework and boundaries I think that's that's also also important but. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's like, like with everything, it's, uh, it's just a matter of uh, the right doses. And also, it's an easy thing to, because they are calm, also with babies, it's easy, no, to give them an iPad and... You know, just having a discussion exactly with uh, um, uh, with uh, with Yussi actually about it. Um, so he told me he had breakfast the other day with his family and saw the neighbor, uh, you know, um, the table, where actually father, uh, you know, checking his iPhone, mother yeah. as well. And the two kids watching iPad. So actually, the whole family of four, yeah. <laughs> totally addicted to the digital device. And yeah. actually, it's uh, it's it's amazing. So um, this is a big exercise for the fathers to to be example and also to give time to uh, exactly to exactly kids. yes yeah. Well, no, that's that's true. So it's uh, yeah, we have certain 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 rules, but um, yeah. So that's a more like a you know ethical and education uh, discussion. But um, yeah. I just want to give you a short overview over with the market, what's what's going on, and um, any questions? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So this will be on time. It's good. Perfect. <laughs> I'm hungry now. Yeah. I don't want to slice time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.